You just found the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. All right, today we interview BJ Penn. This is a great day. I love the guy. A uh, huge fan of his. So you're going to love this episode. We also have a giveaway with this particular podcast. So here's how you can win a free program, free access to MAPS Anabolic. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode and tell us your favorite BJ Penn moment. And Doug will go through the comments, pick the best one. And if he picks yours, you win free access to MAPS Anabolic. Now, this episode is brought to you by the book, The Resistance Training Revolution. In this book, I write about why resistance training is the best form of exercise for most people. You can learn more about this book at the resistance training revolution.com. One more thing. We are still running the promotion that we've been running all month long. Actually, it's uh, ending very, very soon. We have two workout programs that are 50% off and a workout program bundle that's 50% off. Here they are. The first program on sale is MAPS Hit. The second program that's on sale is MAPS Split. And the bundle that's on sale is the Bikini Bundle. All of them 50% off. You can find them at mapsfitnessproducts.com. And to get the discount, use the code Spring break. All right, enjoy this podcast. Question I have for you, BJ, is because when you read about fighters, and I followed you for a long time, huge fan. And when you read about fighters, uh, typically they have there's like this kind of stereotype, like they grew up in a bad, you know, home, you know, bad family life, grew up on the, you know, in, in, in bad neighborhood, and that's why they chose how to fight. Your story's a little different, right? How did you grow up, and then what made you decide? Because you're one of the most, in my opinion natural fighters in the sense that you could tell if you love fighting. How, how did you grow up and then what made you choose to fight as a career? Uh, I was, so I was, I was born in, on, in Honolulu. I was born on that island. When I was three, my mother moved us to the big island in Tahilo and grew up over there, went to Hilo High School. And uh, she's, I, I, I always, I always just kind of liked fighting, thought it was cool. I would, Ask my uncle, like, oh, who's the, they would play racquetball. I'd be like, oh, who's the toughest guy here? Is it you? Is it him? Is it this <laughs> guy? And I was just, yeah, I was always into it and um, loved wrestling. I loved Rocky Balboa. I loved Hulk Hogan. You know, I loved all that WWF. I loved all that stuff. And, you know, I just, I, then I got into jujitsu kind of. Some guy moved on, on, on my road and he did a couple of jujitsu lessons with Half Gracie. And then he saw he saw his kids walking around the road, walking home from school and stuff. And he asked my dad, he was like, hey, have your kids come down and I'll work out, do jujitsu with us and stuff. And I was like, oh, it's a waste of my time. I'm, I'm already the toughest guy in the world. That's the way, you know? <laughs> so you already and, had that attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah that I, was, I was already, I was already always, you know, thinking I was tough. But I was st still a small kid, 16 or 17. And, and then uh, my dad's like, just go down one time so this guy stops asking me. But my dad was a judo black belt, so he was kind of, like, glad the guy was asking. But he was just like, you know what? You don't want to do it. Just go down one time. I'll tell the guy you don't like it. And then I went down and, and uh, I wrestled around with the guy at the rec center over there. And I was like, he choked me out and he arm locked me. And I was like, you know, this is. Because I saw UFC and stuff, but I didn't care. You know, mm -hmm. I was just kind of more into boxing and different things. And I just kind of thought, man, with this... I could I could kick, kick everybody's butt in Hilo. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what's funny. I, so I have a friend that I went to high school with, and he grew up in Hawaii. And he used to tell me about the the fighting culture in Hawaii, where he'd say like, "Oh yeah, if you have a problem with with somebody, you could just fight it out, and people will let you fight. And whoever wins, there's respect there, and nobody's trying to shoot each other or whatever." Is that true? Is there like a is there like a, a a fighting kind of honor culture there? And did that contribute to, I guess, the way you fight? Yeah, yeah. As soon as the fight would break out, always in high school, everybody would start yelling one on one, one on one. Like no no jumping in, you know, just uh, and people would fight and stuff. And and then when UFC came in, all that just kind of changed everything, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody started choking each other and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, do you do you remember your very first fight as a kid? Do you remember the very first one you got into? You know, it was I I I went to my uncle came to my Hall of Fame and I made sure to put him at the beginning and I said I I needed to uh talk about my uncle there because it was he's the one who told me he said go get your toys back right now. So go get your <laughs> toys back. Your toys? How how old were you? How old were you? Oh, I was just a little kid. Yeah, I was just <laughs> 5 or 6 and it was just like <laughs> 
go get your toys back. I go, oh, but he bit me. And he goes, well, then you know what to do. Go get your toys. <laughs> go get your toys back. But now, remember, yeah. I'm assuming you got your toys back. <laughs> yeah, I got them back. All right. Now, when you when you did jujitsu, you in a very, you were you were like you were the prodigy, right? You were a phenom. It, you entered into jujitsu, and at the time, no American had won a major jujitsu tournament. And you did it, and yeah. you, you trained. Got their black belt. I think in quick. three years or something like that. Like. Were you just a natural when you first started training, or were you just obsessed with it, and so you studied it all the time? You know, I I didn't I didn't know I I didn't I didn't realize I I, I didn't know what I was gonna be when I grew up. I didn't know if I was gonna be hanging down at the beach, drinking beer like my older brother, or, or what kind of things I'll be doing. So, you know, when when I got into jujitsu, I just I just um it was just something fun. I think before desire, before dedication, it just starts with love and. And I just loved what I was doing and I always wanted to be a tough guy. I loved watching Hulk Hogan, Rocky Balboa, all those things and just wanted to, you know, wanted to be somebody. And people ask me, how you got into fighting? And I'm like, well, I wanted to be on TV, but I couldn't sing. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> this was the best thing I could do. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It worked so, out for you. Yeah. So when you, when you were training and when you did some of those first tournaments in Brazil, how did they react to this American that was kicking everybody's ass, were they cool about it, or were they very, were they mean? You know what? Um, I came from a good. I had a good gym, a good team behind me. It was Andre Pedernares. That's where Jose Aldo and Leo Santos and Shaolin and many other great jujitsu jiu athletes come out of that school. Yeah, they were, You know what? I think it was a good thing that I had a big group of people behind me. Um, while I was there, and a bunch of Brazilians, they were they were pretty nice. They were, especially the the group that I was from. They always supported me, always helped me out, and and everybody was always pretty nice and pretty respectful. Actually, you, one memory I have of one of your uh, of your fights that I'll never get out of my head, and it, I think it because I, I almost feel like there's some fighters that are you know they're fighters, and then there's fighters that are like whether they get paid or not. This is what they're supposed to do. And there's something you, I don't remember who you fought. I can't remember off the top of my head, but at the end you won and you licked the blood off of your, you know what I'm talking uh, about. You licked the blood off of your, the, it was the other guy's blood off your own glove. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the greatest lightweight in the history of the sport. And you're like, and I'm like, this guy, if this was a thousand years ago, you'd just be in the, yeah, he you know, lives for this. Yeah. If it was 2000 years ago, you'd be in the Coliseum. That's, this is what you were meant to, meant to do. Did you know this about yourself that when you get into, how do you feel when you get in these fights? Do you become a different person? I, I always say, no, that wasn't me doing that. <laughs> but um, no, I always, we always make a joke that. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Right I guess there. that was me. <laughs> There's the proof. There. <laughs> no, we, you know, we always would make different jokes because that was, that's what they would do in the, the old, uh, the old Hawaiian days. We would hear the stories that, the, um, the sacrifices would be long-legged fish. <laughs> so they call them long-legged fish. But yeah, we just, that's, that's the, when you just, you're intense, you're into it, right? You're just in the moment, moment, right? In yeah. the moment. Now, were you, were, you, were you ever scared? Did you ever enter a fight scared? Yeah, the, for sure. You're scared, you're nervous. But we was, I was talking to um, Adam a few times and the an antidote for anxiety is confidence. You never got to worry about it. Anxiety once you start being confident and and uh, you know you just kind of remind remind yourself about what's going to happen. You can sit there all day, but no amount of anxiety is going to help anything. Just know what you're going to do, whether you're walking into a fight or walking into a business meeting or well, you know, I, walking into anything. I imagine though it's got to be like uh, like anything else where some things you have a lot more confidence in others. Like, are there times? Can you recall like certain fighters that? you were like ultra confident about like maybe mm -hmm. because of their style or maybe whatever. And then other guys were, you were like, fuck, this is going to challenge everything I got in me. Yeah. I'm more nervous sometimes when, when you're um, overlooking the guy or not thinking about like when you're nervous and like crying, like, Oh, I'm about to fight Matthews. And I'm actually in the back kind of tearing a little because I could get sent to the hospital or something. And then when you're not as worried as that, and then you're just kind of going out and then somebody, because anybody can kick your butt, right? At any moment, you know, anything can happen. So I think it's the, the ones you worry about the most is, is the best for you. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. when you when you get in there, right, like, you know, there's always that kind of first, especially with a, a very experienced fighter like you, 
there's always like that first minute of like posturing mm -hmm. and feeling each other out. What's going through your brain in that in that time in that moment? Yeah, like uh, I, I I call it sometimes. People say like, how is it when you're walking to the cage? I'm like, there's turbulence, but just like an airplane, you're not gonna stand up and start screaming. You know, there's turbulence, but um, yeah, you. Go, you kind of want to just get it on, get it going. Kind of even, it's the same thing as even when you're a kid and you're standing there on the soccer field and they're like, come on, start the game already. You <laughs> yeah, know, it yeah. kind of all feels the same. I guess you could say your first amateur fight could be this same feeling as your world championship fight. I mean, there's different stakes on the line, but nobody wants to get their butt kicked. And yeah, the worst man. thing about fighting is, Right. I mean, there's different sports. I mean, a big wave could smash you and this and that. But the worst part is that guy's going to go around and tell everybody, kick your ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, you, you, you've had so you've had so many great moments and fights. I want to know which ones what stands which ones stand out the most like for you. Um, geez, um, for sure. It's it's that first time I won the um, I would say it's the first time I ever fought in the octagon. My first time walking in because I wasn't just some street punk or just some troublemaker who thought he could fight i actually put when went there and did it put it on the line and then when i when i beat matt hughes the first time i won the belt yeah. um, mm -hmm. i think that was the last time I mean, that's when i think i think my prime was 25 years old and that's that's when i just really loved it loved the whole thing and mm -hmm. so I, I mean your education is based on your appetite and and that's that's when I really enjoyed what I was doing. What's the what was the most challenging uh, fight for you? Was it was it also that? Jeez, or? I, I think it's I think it's all I I it's always comes back to that it's, it's yourself is why and how you're feeling that day and how you're walking because you have all these um, grand dreams of okay this I'm gonna get do this fight with this guy on this day and I'm gonna feel so great when I get there I'll be so ready but when you get there you're like I didn't feel as good as I thought I was gonna feel <laughs> right now. Right, so it's kind of just psyching yourself up and keeping it, getting into it. But all the guys are tough, man. All the guys, mm -hmm. everybody feels the same strength. It doesn't matter what weight class or because everybody's just going at it, going mm -hmm. after it. Now, I've heard sometimes that even in the weigh-ins, you can kind of look into your opponent and you can see uh, fear or you could see a bit of hesitancy there. Did you ever have moments of that where like, oh man, I got this. I, I have this over them. Oh, 100% all the time. You should, you should be able to, if you're the real champion and you're in touch with yourself, you should be able to have him feel your presence the whole time you're anywhere near him. He can just know you're there and have to, because he can just feel it. That's how strong your aura is at that time, you know. I saw in one of your your I guess training montages, you did something that uh, later I see other fighters do. But I think you're the first one that I saw do this. I'm, I don't know. I don't, I don't, underwater I'm, with the uh, yeah. I'm sure stone. you didn't. I'm oh. sure you didn't invent this, but yeah. you, But I saw you. You were running underwater, holding uh, like a big stone. What is that for? I'm assuming you're holding your breath and you're building stamina. Like what? What was that for? Uh huh. You know what? You know what's good about that one is because we sit out there in the middle of the ocean and run the rocks. So when you do, there was actually a pretty heavy rock. So by the time you pick it up, a lot of your anaerobic starts to go already. You already feel your muscles start burning. So then you start running and your lactic acid filling up and then you kind of going up to the top and just staying out there, staying calm and then and then just keep going. It, it, it's, a, it is a, it's a fun workout. Is it, is it, yeah, it looks it, brutal. I would imagine it trains uh, like you to not panic because you can't breathe lactic acid so you got to stay calm while you're working out so it's probably got to be a similar feeling as being choked out, right? Maybe. I, I would think, I was talking about it the other day, every workout, whether you're doing chest or running or boxing or everything, every workout is working your confidence. That's what you're really actually mm. really working, right? Your confidence to do that motion, that nervous system motion or whatever it is. And and I think that's just one more thing to yeah, work work your confidence. How, how often did you fight somebody that you really wanted to punch in the fucking face? Um, <laughs> she's... You know, even even if you're I a did, nice guy, yeah, you're a nice guy. Even, even if like... I didn't want to punch him, then I'd try to make up some reason, you know, try to, try to get something going, you know, yeah. to get into you said it. Something to my mom. There's got to be yeah. guys though. There's got to be guys that there. There's got to at all the fights you've had. There's got to be some that you were really looking forward yeah. to punch him in the no, face. No, there there is, but there's all kinds of walks of life. There's like 
people who are assholes and, and no matter how much times they get their, their butt kicked, they're still the same guys. So you got to respect them too. You're like, man, you know what? You're a true, yeah. you're, you're an authentic you're, asshole. You're a true punk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it doesn't change them no matter what. Authentic. Yeah. 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 How about favorite people? Are there, are there other, uh, other athletes that, uh, you've become really good friends with, uh, through the fight game? Yeah. Uh, I would say Matt Hughes, Jens Pulver. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got tons, Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz, Michael Bisping. I mean, the list goes on and on for forever. Oh, that's interesting. So I didn't know that Joe you Joe Stevenson, yeah, a bunch. So a lot of guys you fought ended up being good for Yeah, friends. I guess you you share things. And even sometimes when you're a kid, you get into it with somebody, and later on in high school, you guys are friends mm -hmm. later or, or respect, whatever. Yeah. You know, Yeah, you guys share a moment in time that just you, you two share, so... Mm. A lot of respect there. Who hit, who hit you cool. the hardest? Who who punched you the hardest? The hardest. She's. You know, I think it was, had to be Matt, Matt, or, Matt or George, both when they hold you on the ground and they start elbowing. I remember one time when El, uh, I fought Matt Hughes the second time after beating him and I kept running my mouth, talking in the, in the media <laughs> and this and that. And when he finally got me on the ground and he stood up, and and he threw his elbow down and it just missed me, hit the ground. And I thought, oh my God, this guy wants to kill me for all this stuff I've been saying. <laughs> Man, he, yeah. There's some, those two, like, cause as far as, if I ever got concussions or anything, it was from it was from those guys. Yeah, man, it was from them. Uh, what about when you're training for fights? Uh, it, it, were there things that you were there mistakes that you made? I would imagine. Uh, I know a lot of people I've trained or worked with. Uh, some of the biggest mistakes is that they overtrain, they overdo it, getting ready. Did you ever encounter any challenges like that getting ready for a fight? Oh man, I was a master of overtraining and a master of undertraining, trying to figure out which one is right, and it just went so long. I, I mean. When I first um, started training, like right before the Jiu-Jitsu World Championships, I was with I was there when CrossFit was when they made the CrossFit in Santa Cruz. Greg Glassman and mm -hmm. he just had that little little area right on the side. It was in Claudio Franca's Jiu-Jitsu gym. Mm -hmm. They actually made a, a workout for it. it was called like Fight Gone Bad or something like that. Yeah, I even had to uh, like I remember well, that I trained at Claudio. That's where I got. That's where I did Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, fight gone bad, and then I remember I had to, um, I had to write something for him because somebody tried to take the fight gone bad workout, and he was like, "No, we made it." This and that. I had to write a letter for him for court or something. But it is amazing watching, watching how, how big that 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 went. Yeah. But, right. but as far as the training, yeah, overtraining because what would happen as a kid is you have so much energy, and then you're like. You meet, you got your your own routine already from the jujitsu day. So I got what I do. Then I meet Frank Shamrock, and I'll be like, okay, let me add your routine to mine. Now I meet Tito Ortiz. Okay, let me add your. Oh, now wow. I got three routines in one, and I'm overtraining every day. You know, that's yes. got to be one of the hardest things. Oh uh, yeah, out. speaking of that, I mean, you must have seen quite the evolution of the sport in general. Uh, you know, over the years and the way that they now train and uh, mm -hmm. like, what would you say were, were some of the biggest kind of uh, epiphanies they found in, in training in, in, in preparing fighters for their fights Jeez. and you know what i i don't know i really honest and honest question i don't know how much further along they are like i know their techniques are because they can kick all of our butts now mm. but but i'm sure they're still making the same mistakes i think mm. i think that's a that's a tough one and different trainers and i mean when you i was talking about it the other day because i get a chance to look from the side and i saw some people trying to put together a fight camp in costa mesa and i thought what a big cluster F this whole thing is. Now mm -hmm. now, now that you're getting ready for a fight, which should be the most relaxed, now you're bringing 10 people who don't know each other and trying to make them all work together and do all these things, you know? And yeah. and it's, right? Yeah, it's a big cluster fuck. Right? Yeah. You think about it, right? <laughs> how, how would anybody manage that, right? It seems like, you, like they're trying to have their athletes learn uh, way too many things at once instead of really highlighting their strengths. So do you think that that's something that, you know, you've seen too? Yes, I I have I have I've seen that a lot, and I one coach I always uh, hang out with uh, Jason Perillo. He talks about that because I could be like telling a fight. I'm not a coach, right? I, I don't have any jujitsu world champions. I don't have any UFC champions. I really coach as much. I love to be a training partner and train with people in the gym, though. I, I love that stuff, um, but. You know, I kind of watch him and I watch different coaches, and it's like true. You got to see what 
they start doing good while they're sparring and then you start going okay that do that again mm. do because if i go jump up and go okay now start punching him now start ki-, you know the, that's it's not what not they do different. that's not what they do mm-hmm. yeah they they do their own thing it's it's interesting do you still train mm. a lot in the gi i do i do train in the gi because i think it's great it's almost like juggling for you, for your brain to like grow grow brain cells type thing because there's only like so many moves without the gi but there's thousands of moves with the gi so it makes you slow down too yeah it's 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 awesome yeah. it's awesome but now at this age and being involved with the UFC gyms and everything what really clicked to me was was we we're we we're in Honolulu at one of the gyms and a, and a woman older woman comes up to me and goes hey thank you for for having this gym here and I go no thank you for being here and she goes no, I really want to thank you because I gave back my antidepressant medicine. Wow. And and that's when it hit me that, because f- this was only, working out was only for fighting for me my whole life. I've only thought about trying to fight with people. That's why I want to work out. And then I realized, no, that's it's for your mental health. That's oh. what this thing is. It's all about your mental health. You're in there, you're working your physical. and But this is, that's the whole thing. That's and why that's, you never want to yeah. stop. Yeah, and because and, I look at this today, I'm like, it's easy for me to go, oh, I did this for the last 20 years. I don't want to do this. I want to do something else. But no, it's for my mental health. Get back in there mm-hmm. and go do it for fun. Feel a lot better later. Get my endorphins. Get everything smiling. I can actually walk around the gym and see people who just got there and see people who have the natural high. Like they're almost drunk yeah. where they are. They're having such a good time talking after the after the workout. Absolutely. I, can, I can totally see that difference. The people who just walked in are still in that trying to get out of that depression and, and all the other people are laughing, jumping up and down, joking so, around. So Absolutely. true. Talking about s- stopping, h- how hard was it for you to hang it up? Yeah, it is It is hard. I mean, you always think about, because you. It's like I've just been hanging out at the Ruka gym and I've just been giving all their, their young fighters fits and working out with them and stuff, you know what I mean? And you're just like, but but you know it's it's about your hunger. It's about who wants it the most and that's all it doesn't matter who's the best it's about who wants it the most mm-hmm. and then that's when you got to know that your kids are more important or this is more important and and other things and then you just realize like well that's right my kids taking my kids to disneyland is more important than <laughs> than walking around with <laughs> my my ankle can't work because i broke my leg last night in the fight or whatever it yeah, is yeah, yeah. i uh, i'm a, so i'm a big jiu-jitsu fan um and i trained for years and so i want to i want to ask you because i i consider you one of the best jiu-jitsu guys in mma but also just pure jiu-jitsu uh, phenomenal who are some of the best jiu-jitsu guys you've rolled with and who had the easiest time or who did you find would could tap you out because there's some guys out there that are just you hear yeah. legends right you hear oh. stories about them yeah so the fr- um of course health gracie he helped teach me he was amazing unbelievable just he's just a just a i kind of emulated my style after his like when i first get into the ufc and just be ready to fight and kind of emulated after my teacher at the time it was health gracie and then I went to work out with his cousin one day, who's Higan Machado, and he really impressed me. It was mm-hmm. unbelievable. He was huge, but he just he didn't use any power, just just used all technique and just tapped me out like a baby, played around with me. Then I remember when I got older one time, um, I was fighting Henzo Gracie, and so I had Alan Goez come down and and hang out. And so I did a, I did a training where I was like, okay, I'll use this Olympic wrestler and then you, and I'll go back and forth. And during that training, Alan Goez tapped me out three times. So the next day I said, oh, no, just me and you. <laughs> <laughs> and then he tapped me out three times again. And I go, master, nice to meet you. Wow. Nice to meet you. you oh, know? that's awesome. He was, he was so awesome. But um, yeah, he's still around. I always still see him, but there's always uh, there's always new people coming up. I just can't imagine how good the people are now. Now watching the, 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 the prime fighters now going, uh, how do you think a prime BJ would do? How do you think twenty? You said twenty-five year old BJ. How do you think twenty-five year old BJ would do today in in the UFC? Yeah, I would. I would make sure to learn everything I need to know to beat these guys. Mm. I would crush these guys. Yeah, that's <laughs> <the same. laughs> He's BJ. Dude. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, what things would you? What are the? What other things do you think you would add, or would yeah. you? Would you change anything? Yeah, you know, uh, Jason Perillo, my old coach. He was. Uh, he was talking to a, a Russian. Uh, thing yesterday and they were talking about that all the Russians were upset because he was saying that I'm the greatest lightweight not Khabib and uh. this and that he was talking to them and and then I was on the side and, and he was 
He heard me say, I, and so I, I didn't know who he was talking to. I'm like, 25 year old BJ Penn will kill him, kill these guys. <laughs> Ask them why, why he's only got the 155, not the 172. <laughs> we all know why. <laughs> then, then I find out it's live over there. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, but, but it is what it is, right? I mean, if he could get the 170, why wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. Why would it Khabib go get it if he could? Yeah. Why mm -hmm. wouldn't he go beat Usman if he could? Mm -hmm. I think we all know why. Yeah. <laughs> now, right? now, a, a lot of a lot of fighters uh, and a lot of athletes in general, after they stop their sport, they start to lose their identity. They sometimes go through depression, trying to find themselves again. Did you experience any of that? Yeah, not. You know what? I as far as identity, why I'm I think I'm I'm much more well known today i think because the sport's growing uh, yeah. so big so oh, more people know who i am or not now you know because of the television and stuff but the identity that i lost was what do i do you know what do i do no camp what do i do in this time or, and trying to put all everything together put all the pieces together from right because I, I would go just hang out for a few months and then i'd go to fight camp for two or three months and I had my year always set for the last 20 years. So mm -hmm. now sitting around, I, I do miss, cer miss certain things and I try to figure out how to replace them with different mm -hmm. things. I mean, that stuff is real. That are you pouring yourself into any other athletes or are you kind of like, uh, how, what does your training look like these days as well? Um, now I just train for my mental health mm -hmm. and, and, and because I love, because I love it and I, I feel good in there, you know, feel good sparring out with the other kids, but I try to put other things like now doing these other thoughts thoughts and stuff with the UFC gym mm -hmm. and um, my kids and just try to put other things in those those areas. How old are your kids? 12 and 9. Are they jiu-jitsu right. too? I'm trying to get them into jiu-jitsu. So they, they like it here and there. But yeah. Yeah, but it's kind of a, it's not too bad of a thing for me because I've been around jujitsu so much. It's not bad if they want to be at the soccer field or mm -hmm. somewhere else, you know, mm -hmm. because I've been around that so long, but, you know, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Hey, BJ, I want you to school me on the history of, of Ruka. Um, okay. I, I know that uh, you're very close to them. I believe that you're a, a big part of what helped blow them up uh, because before that, before you, I didn't know of, of mm -hmm. Ruka. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everybody rocks RVCA now, so... Uh, school me on the history of that and how that happened with you. Okay, so uh, Ruka, this guy, uh, Pat Tenori, his name is Pat Tenori, and he had a partner his, whose name was Conan Hayes, a professional surfer from the Big Island of Hawaii. So Pat saw me doing jiu-jitsu at the Brent Events Center down here at, in Santa Clara. He thought I was Filipino, but then, we, so all that time he thought I was Filipino, but my dad's Irish and my, mom, my mom's half native Hawaiian, half Korean. And so, but he thought I was Filipino and then, kind of had a connection just kept um he talked to me a few times and then he gave me a shirt actually that that back then it said jujitsu we fight it wasn't ruka yet or whatever and then he kind of made ruka in his garage and it just kind of got bigger and he just made the coolest clothes you know just the coolest art and the different things and he just had a great idea and here we are together and he was one of the first guys of of the any brands or whatever who kind of like did a sponsorship thing and kind of stuck it out because the other brands were like tap out and all the mm -hmm. different brands, but he was like a real brand that was kind of out there like a Quicksilver type thing, right? right? right. And and he really supported the sport and he's a jujitsu black belt under Alan Goez uh, okay. and yeah. So so now c can you share like what is your are you still a sponsored athlete through them or do you have some sort of a partnership or stake in the company at yeah, all? Yeah, no, still a sponsored athlete to them. Uh, okay, yes. uh, yes. that's awesome. Oh, cool. good deal. Yeah. Now now talk about you and. UFC gyms. I know you have some gyms in Hawaii. Um, how did that all get started? How did you end up working with them and starting some gyms out there? Yeah, so uh, 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 Dana and Lorenzo came came to us and talked to talked to us about that they were going to do UFC gyms. And I from from day one, I was I was on board. I, I thought it was a great idea. I wanted to be involved, and uh, and we jumped in right away. And it took a little while, about a year maybe, and then and then we started moving on construction. Uh, Adam came down and gave me a sledgehammer myself and let me smash the place <laughs> down. <laughs> right? Good deal. We did that, yeah. And then um, it was the the place where we put the gym is a legendary nightclub place that I used to frequent all the time. Oh, so yeah. it just was perfect at the gym. And it, <laughs> <laughs> nice little it was, the place there. was called Pipeline. Yeah, it was called Pipeline. 
And uh, yeah, nice little transition that that's actually the gym now. That's great. So, that's uh, wild. Yeah. And, and now, you know, I know Hawaiians are very proud of, uh, of their heritage. You're like a, you're like, I know you're a celebrity anywhere, but you're pro are you like a, a king yeah. over there? You must be like the, the biggest, you know, when you go over there, how do the people kind of how, a big deal? Over yeah. There. How, how are people uh, with you in, in your, where you're from? Oh, um, everybody's very nice. Everybody's, um, always, uh, very um they always have nice things to say and just just it's it's good it's good to see everybody and and it's good because where i am in hilo it's not really that many people so what we always say we're everybody's famous in hilo because they're so they're all always out the window all of us right mm -hmm. waving at other people but yeah on 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 the on the main island the the city the island with the city honolulu it is it's good to go over there and see everybody and 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 be an inspiration and in whatever i can or do whatever I can. Well, right. speaking of people being nice, and everybody is nice, and I would be mad at myself if I didn't hear your full side of the story because I don't think you commented much on it, but there, not that long ago, you got into a bar fight, and it, you could tell in the video that you were want nothing to do with it and then end up whooping the guy's ass afterwards. I want to know how that all transpired. Like, how did that happen? Where were you at? Uh, yeah. What was going through your head? Yeah. No, I don't know why. The, the guy was... My 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 friends was sleeping at my house for weeks before that, but um, he was sleeping at your house. Yeah, yeah, we all know each other. Oh, dude. you know yeah. the wow. you know the dude. Yeah, 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 we all know each other. Um, and then I don't know, I don't know if he got mad, he got jealous. I don't know if girls were giving me too much attention in the place or what. <laughs> no, <I don't> know. <laughs> he just starts talking yeah. shit after. I mean, I'm sure there was drinking involved, right? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Just, I don't know. I don't think he thought. He obviously that. didn't think it through because <laughs> the last person yeah. in the world. Right, says, exactly. He's got to know, he's got to know your skill set. Um, you can, t I can tell in the, the short clip that I've seen, you can tell you're, you're like, you can tell you don't want nothing to do. Like you're not, you don't want to put the guy down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's sad because he, he always wants to like be my friend now or whatever. Right. But it's better. We keep each other's distance. Cause he, he was actually after that he went to the police and tried to put a, um, a restraining order. Yeah, restraining the police, and they were just <laughs> like, "What? <laughs> you attacked him?" You know what I mean? Wow. But is that does that happen often? You know, being a professional fighter who's well known, does that happen often that people want to test you? Yeah, try to mess with you, or is it more, or do you get more respect because of it? Yeah, no, no, you get a lot of respect. Everybody's nice. Everybody's okay. nice. Just yeah. Just every so, once in a while, a drunk friend wants to fight you. That's all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's so crazy to me. So, are you still based out of Hawaii? Yes, I am. Yeah, in yeah. Hilo. Yeah, yeah. So you're not. You're never going to move out of there. You know, we were talking about maybe doing some different things or stay up in California to work with the UFC gym for a, a little bit out of the year. Because actually, my my kids are up here right now with their mother. Their mother's married to someone else, mm. so they're up here with that family. So it'd be nice for me to be around, and I just want to be around with my kids. Are mm. now, BJ? Are you are you following uh, the UFC closely? Do you watch all the UFC fights, and you know all the fighters that are fighting right now, or do you kind of like whatever? You know. I, my my favorite ones that I know and 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 I like and I want to see the, the big fights and stuff, but I, I can't. It's so big now the sport. I just I can't mm -hmm. I can't keep up. That's how I felt. I, I was yeah, a huge. I was a huge. Yeah, back got when, away from me. Back when you were fighting, it was like I, how often do we have a UFC fight? It was like yeah. once yeah. every I, few months. Yeah, once frequently. every three months, right? Yeah. Four times a year. Yeah, so it was. Re you could follow almost every fighter. Where now, I've, I mean, I've, there's so many names I don't even know. So mm -hmm. so who are your favorite people to watch right now? My favorite to watch right now, who's who is in what? Well, the last fight was Adesanya, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, all of the champs. I always, I, I, maybe not the bottom guys. I don't know, but I always know who the champs are at the top. So yeah. Uh, Stipe. Who's who's at the two hundred five now? Isn't Stipe fighting? Oh yeah, yeah. It's that guy who just beat Adesanya. Mm -hmm. Um, Jan Jan Blackowicz. Oh uh, right, right, right. But the the last fight I got really excited about was John Jones versus Daniel Cormier because that was like the two top guys, right? Mm -hmm. Like the two best guys, and then John Jones won that one. But she's that's a couple of years now. Time flies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any For sure. uh, now you you also a fan of of boxing? Did you have any any uh, favorite boxers throughout history that you used to like? Oh, yeah, to man. I I remember when I was a kid, my favorite fight is. Um, Evander Holyfield and Riddick Bowl too. I mm. remember that. So it was a great fight. Riddick Bowl beat him the first one, and then he came and he beat Riddick Bowl back the second one. I loved boxing up. I liked um, Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson, of course. Um, 
all the guys, yep, Gerald McClellan or all the different boxers. I remember Julio Cesar Chavez, oh, um, yeah. all those guys. I remember them. Any styles that you would try to, because you were also an exceptional, I mean, your hands were exceptional in the octagon as well. Did you, were any boxers that you would emulate? I would try to do things that I saw Evander Holyfield do. I try to do things, all, all the guys, anybody I could pick up. I'd, Aaron Pryor, I would always watch that guy the, for boxing. Um, she's just, yeah, I would try to relate as much as I could to MMA and just kind of like, because it's all right there, right? It's it's mm -hmm. what you think, what you believe is true. And, uh, yeah, I try to emulate there. Because they would always say, oh, Roberto Duran, he just wanted to beat people up. So, okay, I just want to beat people up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so many uh, MMA fighters today, I feel like they have so many disciplines now underneath them. If you were to to build, like, the ultimate fighter, like, what would be the what would be the three you know, disciplines that, that, that you would she's, make sure they, they trained in. She's, well, oh, yeah, right, because you got judo. Now there's all of, yeah, because before we always used to just think jujitsu, um, wrestling, and, and Muay Thai or, or kickboxing. Mm -hmm. But then now there's judo. Well, there's and, so many now. And then everybody forgot about the spinning kicks, and then people started using them and knocking everybody out. And right. She's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I try to tell people when they say, I want to get involved with the sport, I say, well, what do you love the most? Do you like boxing? They go, what do you mean? I go, do you like boxing? Do you like grappling? Do you like wrestling? What do you like? And when they tell me, and then I tell them, go as far as you can in that. First. And then after, yeah, first, boxing, maybe try to go to the Olympics or do whatever, or jujitsu, try to go see how far you can go in jujitsu tournaments or whatever. And then later on, try to add all that stuff in. And and still till today, because people ask me about jujitsu, and and I tell them, no, it's it's not all you... You can't just have jujitsu anymore to to be a UFC champion. For for offense, it, it won't work. But I still believe that jujitsu is still the best self defense because you're not supposed to be fighting. You're supposed to be running. Mm -hmm. And if they do catch you and grab you, and then you can protect yourself from jujitsu and choke them out or armbar them and get up and run away again. So I still think jujitsu is a great is the best self defense form. I agree. Yeah. Well, I, agree. I mean, I feel like we saw that when the I mean before UFC became really popular and it was underground style versus style. And we saw Gracie's mm -hmm. hit the scene. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, they were they were beating up dudes twice their size. Right. Yeah. Well, I know for I know for me, uh, it's the one full contact uh, martial art. So like you know, boxing's full contact, kickboxing, Muay Thai, wrestling, jujitsu. Jiu-jitsu is the one where you see a lot of times small guys beat big guys. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, it's probably the only one that has absolute yeah. uh, uh, categories where there's no weight class. And oftentimes the winner is like, you know, like a 160-pound guy, 170-pound guy. You don't see that with boxing. You know, yeah. you get a big boxer against a small boxer. A small boxer can be good. Big boxer might kill him, right? Jiu-jitsu, well, not so much. Or, or you don't see that just even in today's UFC with um, like Khabib being a wrestler. And then Usman being a wrestler, he just kind of already thinks like, oh, maybe I can't beat him. Because in wrestling, you don't think about that as much. Right. right? And jiu-jitsu, we were always used to having the absolute division. Yeah. You do your weight class, you see how you did, and just for fun, you'd go jump in the absolute division. So I think we were always used to that. Mm -hmm. you know. And jiu-jitsu is made so the small man can beat up the big man. Absolutely. You ever roll with like some of like the, the, the legends like Hickson? You ever roll with Hickson? I never got to roll with Hickson. I because I was out there and then I fought with Henzo and different things. Oh, so, so they're probably like, no, nah, we can't fight. <laughs> yeah, so, but can come out and hang out. We're all friends, but yeah. as far as the training goes. What about Marcelo Garcia? You ever roll with I've him? Never, no. Oh, man, passed, I would have yeah. loved to see seen that, man. He was, they all came after yeah, Marcelo yeah. and all the guys. Excellent, man. Well, well, I'll tell you, I've been watching you since forever, and uh, it's, it's an honor to have yeah, you in the living studio. Living legend, man. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thank so, you guys. I'm happy to hear you doing what you're doing with uh, UFC Gym, so you could just take your energy and direct it towards helping people. Great partnership. Know. Yeah, great yeah. partnership, improve their fitness and health. And um, So thanks for coming on, man. Oh, I no, thank it, you guys for having me. Thank awesome. you. Great time. Thank thanks. you. Awesome. Look, you can go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides. They cost nothing, so we've got a bunch of them for free. You can also find all of us on social media. Uh, Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I want to start to create some good habits that I think that we can build that can be sustainable. So I'm going to introduce first some walking. And this is where this, there's a lot of variance here, depending on who I'm talking to, right? If I got somebody who's an absolute couch potato 
and they walk less than 2,000 steps a day, a 20-minute walk in a day is already a, a dramatic 